Why are the most ruthless and violent people throughout history always men? If there's ever been a mega-violent, drug-slinging dominatrix, I've sure never heard of her. Or what about a murderous dictator, rebel military commander, serial killer, playground bully? Again and again, almost all men. Why us? Why men? Is it in our biology? Did we evolve this way? Or is there some broader cultural force at work? A Brief History of Male Violence Back before drone strikes and cruise missiles, the people most adapted for conquest and discovery were invariably young men. One, because they were physically the strongest and most able, but also because they were disposable. If you want a new generation of children, you need a full generation of mothers to birth those children. But you only need a couple of men. Therefore, if you were young, broke, and unproven, then off you went to kill something and prove yourself. Masculinity has historically been all about the three P's. Protector, provider, procreation. The more you protect, the more you provide, the more you have sex, the more of a man you are. For the most part, this is still widely considered masculinity today, although the three P's look slightly different in different cultures. It's why a frat bro who bangs half a sorority is a stud, while the sorority girl who blows the baseball team is a slut, slut. It's why a woman who speaks up at board meetings is seen as shrill, and a man who talks over people and demeans them in front of others is seen as bold and a strong leader. But this version of masculinity evolved for a particularly socially beneficial reason to protect us from invaders and protect the town and kill bears and stuff. We needed men to have sex a lot because something like half of your kids didn't survive into puberty. We needed them to provide because you never knew when the next horrible winter was around the corner. And the fact that this form of masculinity came at a cost, both to the men in terms of their own health and mortality and to society in terms of violence and patriarchal dominance, was discounted. Who cares if men die? suffer and lose their minds at startling rates. It's simply the price we pay for protection and prosperity and babies. The problem is that today things have changed. One, violence has largely been automated or outsourced or just plain eliminated. Factory farms provide our food. Small specialized militaries protect our borders. And given how economically interdependent and wealthy the world has become, violence has declined. Two, service economies mean that women are just as capable, and perhaps even more capable, to work and earn a living than men are at most professions. Male advantages and strength and expendability are no longer necessary for a healthy society. Fact is, we're much more conscious and moral than we used to be. Therefore, the drawbacks of masculine aggression and dominance present not just economic liabilities, but ethical ones as well. Truth is, when all is said and done, the ancient bargain of strength, durability, and expendability for prestige, dominance, and tons of hot babes doesn't evolutionarily make sense anymore. The male body is becoming outdated tech. You so it's so okay to be weak. A global pandemic with the United States leading the body positive. I was just eating till I'm dead. America has now become the fattest nation in the world. Congratulations. Fathers, where art thou? It's fascinating that in Judeo-Christian literature, there's an entire book of the Bible dedicated to teaching a son about money, friends, sex, adultery, making wise decisions, marriage, and business. The book of Proverbs, in case you're wondering. But in our households, the resounding answer is normally, no, my dad didn't talk about those things. So where did we learn to become men? With no one teaching virtue, character or responsibility, the alpha male emerges thinking he has some semblance of how the world works, and so the other boys follow his lead. Sometimes the alpha male lands that leadership position because he's mimicking problematic behavior that's been demonstrated by a shitty father figure at home. What did I tell you about crying in this house? Men don't cry. I mean, really, what would dad say? Which his friends may consider cool, since they don't have positive male representation around them. Dad shows him porn, so he shows it to his friends, who then learn early on to objectify women. Dad talks about women with misogynistic overtones, so he and his friends mimic him and begin to talk that way too. It doesn't all come down to just one alpha's influence though. Many of these behaviors and ideas permeate boys' minds through things they've seen or heard in the media and online. The wolves teach the wolf pups how to become wolves. I'm not sure what the answer is to all of this, but any change that happens will be built on the backs of fathering. Moonlight is a good example. Moonlight is a breathtaking story that 
takes us through the life of our hero in three major periods, childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Little did not have a father figure in his life until he met Juan. Juan instilled in him lessons that he would keep throughout his life. At some point, you got to decide for yourself who you're going to be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. The scene is shot in a unique way. The camera moves with the current, even periodically being submerged in the water. This has the effect of making the viewer feel as though they are in the scene with Little and Juan, treading the water with them. When we see Juan teach Little how to swim, we're shown the value of the father figure that we too often ignore. You see the male identity. It is contradictory, ambivalent. It constantly wrestles with the feminine, absorbs it, then expels it. It purports to be tough and then reveals its fragility. It seeks to hide neediness and intense feeling and privately clings to others. The Walking Paycheck Men take on more dangerous jobs and are less likely to report any injuries suffered at work. Men work far longer hours, take fewer vacations and sick days, and suffer worse symptoms of chronic stress and fatigue. Men even die on the job at a startling rate. In short, most men treat themselves as nothing more than a walking paycheck. And, in fact, it's this objectification of their own lives that kills men faster. These are not dead bodies. This is not a crime scene. These are businessmen passed out on the streets of Tokyo after a long day at the office. Men are so emotionally incompetent without women that getting married may statistically be the best thing a man can do to improve his longevity and mental health. Married men live longer and score higher on pretty much every quality of life metric there is, including happiness and life expectancy. Marriage is apparently so important for men's emotional stability that some sociologists go as far as to state that simply being married can raise a man's life expectancy by almost a decade. But then we're often woefully equipped to handle that. Women initiate more than 70% of divorces and separations with the most common cause cited as emotional neglect from their husbands. Those divorces also hit men the hardest. Recently divorced men are more likely to suffer depression, alcoholism, mental illness, and suicide than women are. For all of our strength and power, we sure do die quickly and often. For all of our cunning ambition, we regularly end up miserable, violent, and even suicidal. And for all of our self-sufficiency, we rely on women for our emotional and physical well-being to a startling degree. Ironically, manhood does not seem very manly. Now, there are no easy solutions. As men, we cannot magically and instantly turn our confusion and vulnerability into strength. We have to go into all the difficult feelings, the not knowing, the helplessness, and then also the rage, fear, and need that we have. A truly powerful man is sensitive, emotional, is able to cry, can sometimes admit he can't cope, can allow himself to be passive at times, and can accept feeling powerless, but can also accept feelings of rage, brutality, and sadism. Indeed, the whole spectrum of emotions which human beings are privileged to enjoy. Not dealing with your emotional baggage can literally kill you or make you go crazy.